Welcome to Bite at a Time Books, where we read you your favorite classics one bite at a time. My name is Bree Carlisle, and I love to read and wanted to share my passion with listeners like you. If you want to know what's coming next and vote on upcoming books, sign up for our newsletter at biteatatimebooks.com. Be sure to follow my show on your favorite podcast platform so you get all the new episodes. You can find most of our links in the show notes. But also, our website, biteatatimebooks.com, includes all of the links for our show, including to our Patreon to support the show and YouTube, where we have special behind the narration of the episodes. We're part of the Bite at a Time Books Productions Network. If you'd also like to hear what inspired your favorite classic author to write their novels and what was going on in the world at the time, check out the Bite at a Time Books Behind the Story podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Today we'll be continuing The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum. 9. Santa Claus Claus thought that none of the children would ever know where the toys came from, which they found by their bedsides when they wakened the following morning. But kindly deeds are sure to bring fame, and fame has many wings to carry its tidings into far lands. So for miles and miles in every direction, people were talking of Claus and his wonderful gifts to children. The sweet generousness of his work caused a few selfish folk to sneer, but even these were forced to admit their respect for a man so gentle-natured that he loved to devote his life to pleasing the helpless little ones of his race. Therefore, the inhabitants of every city and village had been eagerly watching the coming of Claus, and remarkable stories of his beautiful playthings were told to the children to keep them patient and contented. When on the morning following the first trip of Claus with his deer, the little ones came running to their parents with the pretty toys they had found, and asked from whence they came, there was but one reply to the question. The good Claus must have been here, my darlings, for his are the only toys in all the world. But how did he get in? asked the children. At this, the fathers shook their heads, being themselves unable to understand how Claus had gained admittance to their homes. But the mothers, watching the glad faces of their dear ones, whispered that the good Claus was no mortal man, but assuredly a saint. And they piously blessed his name for the happiness he had bestowed upon their children. A saint, said one with bowed head, has no need to unlock doors if it pleases him to enter our homes. And afterward, when a child was naughty or disobedient, its mother would say, You must pray to the good Santa Claus for forgiveness. He does not like naughty children, and unless you repent, he will bring you no more pretty toys. But Santa Claus himself would not have approved this speech. He brought toys to the children because they were little and helpless, and because he loved them. He knew that the best of children were sometimes naughty, and that the naughty ones were often good. It is the way with children, the world over, and he would not have changed their natures had he possessed the power to do so. And that is how our Claus became Santa Claus. It is possible for any man, by good deeds, to enshrine himself as a saint in the hearts of the people. Thank you for joining Bite at a Time Books today, while we read a bite of one of your favorite classics. Again, my name is Brie Carlisle, and I hope you come back tomorrow for the next bite of The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter at biteatatimebooks.com. You can check out the show notes or our website, biteatatimebooks.com, for the rest of the links for our show.